Okay, third time's a charm. <laughs> this is the third time I've tried to do this. Okay, so as we've seen in previous problems, uh, not necessarily, necessarily with pyramids, but like when we did the rectangular prism and we did uh, the volume of a cylinder, right? Other three-dimensional shapes like that. Sometimes they'll give us the volume of the shape. In this case, we have the volume of this pyramid, which is 96 inches cubed. And we know its volume. If they wouldn't have said volume, but if they would have just said 96 inches cubed, or like the pyramid is equal to 96 inches cubed, they're talking about volume. And remember, it's because the units are cubed. And that means volume, okay? So again, just to repeat, if it was inches squared, it would be area. Those are very key, very key um, clues as to what we're dealing with. But this time I was a little bit more explicit and I put, you know, this is volume and I gave you two clues to tell you that it's volume. One, the word says volume, and then I gave you the inches cubed. But like I said, compared to like, uh, similar to other problems that we'll see or that you guys will see, um, they'll give you the volume and then they're gonna be missing one of the three or one of the pieces of information you need to find that volume. In this case, they took away the height. We're missing the height. And sometimes, like I told you in the last one, they'll put the height from the middle to the top. This time I just put it on the, on the uh, right-hand side there. And so to find that, what do we do? Again, I always tell you guys when there's problems like this, you got, you're gonna need algebra, yes. And try to get yourself into the mind of the person who made the problem. Or I guess uh, ask yourself, how do, you, how, did, how do they know it's 96? What did they do to figure out that it's 96 inches cubed? The volume, that is. Well, they use the formula just the way we would, right? If, just like we did in the last problem, we have to use the formula. So it's length times width times height divided by three, and that gave them the volume of 96. Okay, I'm not gonna put the inches cubed this time because I'm trying to set up the equation. Okay, like I said, we're gonna be using algebra. So I'm just setting up the equation. So they did all of this and they got 96. Now, to be able to solve the equation, there can only be one piece of information missing. So I have right as it stands now, the formula, the blank, formula has three pieces of information that it needs. And let's see what we have. I have six times six. Again, it's another classic pyramid, right? Six times six. What would those dimensions be to you guys? It doesn't really matter. You can call one of them length and one of them width, but I think without a doubt, without any question, we know that the height is what's missing. So h is going to be missing. So I'm just going to, it doesn't matter, obviously it's the same number, 6 and 6, so I'll just rewrite it. 6 times 6 times h, and I'll just go ahead and go lowercase with the h, okay? Um, divided by 3 is equal to 96. Okay? Now you have a couple of options here. Okay, but we, I guess before we continue, the key thing to mention is that this is a solvable equation because we only have one variable missing or one piece of information that, that, that's uh, not there. So that tells me I can solve this equation for that letter, for the, for the H, meaning that I'm gonna put the, I want to get the H alone on one side of the equal sign because once it's alone, it says what it's equal to. That's, that's the whole point, right? Height is equal to, ta-da. <laughs> anyway, but I know I can solve it because there's only one thing missing, okay. Now, there's a couple of things we can do. We can simplify this expression first or get rid of this fraction first. It's up to you guys. I guess we can just simplify. So we can simplify the numerator a little bit. Instead of six times six times h, I can actually multiply the six times six. Okay, so six times six is 36. And now I'm just gonna write it like more of an algebraic expression, just putting the 36 right next to the h to, to signify that it's multiplied, okay? And divided by three is equal to 96, okay? Now, I made a video when, we, when I was doing uh, algebra or algebraic equations. And there's a couple of videos there on how to work with fractions within an equation. I'm gonna go over it kind of quickly here uh, not super fast, but I'm um, kind of fast. So if you're still a little fuzzy on it, go back to those videos that I did on algebra and specifically look for those ones with um, fractions, okay? So what we have to do now, we can't really solve for the H yet. The thing we really want to do is undo the fraction. And now the only thing that we have control over as far as undoing the fraction 
is the denominator. And that's always the case, okay? If you have an equation with a whole bunch of fractions, all you can really, all the only power you have over the fractions is over the denominator. That's really the only thing you can get rid of or eliminate when we're eliminating fractions. Um, okay, so I have this term, this numerator, 36H, divided by three. Remember that fractions are divisions. That line is a division sign. So 36H divided by three. I want to undo that division. So to undo the, the, the division, I have to do the opposite operation, which is opposite of division is multiplication. So what am I, what am I trying to get rid of? Like I said, the only thing I can actually affect is the three. So I'm going to get rid of the three. Instead of divided by three, I'm going to do the opposite and multiply by three. And just so you know, what you do to one side, you got to do the other, but I'm going to focus here on this side first. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, a dot, and that dot is means multiplication, okay? Times three. Now, if you guys remember the video on how to multiply fractions, I can't multiply like just by, well, by the whole number three. I have to put, put the three that I'm multiplying by in a fraction form. So you just put it over one. Three divided by one is still three. So this still says three, it's just it's in a fraction form, okay? Now, and again, in the video of back, you know, back to those lessons about how to multiply fractions, remember that we can cross cancel. We can cancel a numerator with a denominator, a number on top with a number on bottom, if they have a factor that can be divided out of both of them, a common factor. And they do, of course. And it works like this all the time when we're trying to get rid of fractions in, in, in algebra and equations. So I'm going to divide this three and this three, both of them, by themselves, by three. They can both be divided by three. So three divided by three is one. Three divided by three is one. And if you remember how to multiply fractions, we just multiply straight across. One times 36, is, or 36H, is 36H. And one times one is one, right? But again, the same way that three divided by one is still three, 36H divided by one is still just 36H. So we really don't need to put that one underneath. It doesn't make, it, there's no need for it, okay? It doesn't make sense. Okay, so now I have 36H all by itself. How did I do that? I multiplied this left side by three. Multiplied by three, yes. What I, have to, what I did over here, I have to do over there. So I have to multiply that side by three. Okay, 96 times three, I can do it by hand, but I might as well just do it on the calculator really quick. Uh, 96 times three is equal to 288. Okay, so we have 288 equal to 288. So this is the point. So all we did is get rid of the fraction. It, it's, it takes time getting used to what it looks like or, or, or you know, how, what, what those steps actually look like. But the actual process is not a very complicated thing. Uh, we're just trying to get rid of that, that three, the division by three. So we just multiply by three, okay? All right, so now we're almost there. We're on our last step, penultimate step or I guess it is our last step, right? Because now I'm just going to separate, the H is almost by itself, and that's what I want. But now it's just connected to the 36 by multiplication. So I'm going to separate them, because remember they're multiplied, and we knew that from the beginning, right? That 6 times 6 times H, 36 times H. I already said that when they're together, it means multiplication. So I'm going to divide both sides by 36 to undo that multiplication, okay? So 36 divided by 36 is one. One H is just H. Okay, I think, I think you guys can still see that. Oh yeah, okay, cool. And then 288 divided by 36. Again, I can do it by hand, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my calculator here. 288 divided by 36 is equal to eight. Okay, so that works out really nice. Eight, and might as well put the units, eight inches. Okay. And that's what the height of this pyramid is. So get rid of that little question mark and I can put eight inches high. Okay, so remember <laughs> your Kung Fu, your algebra Fu needs to be strong. Okay, you, ha you, gotta be, you gotta be comfortable with different kinds of equations, whether they have squares in them or cubes in them. Like you have to do the cube root of something or the square root of something. You have to be comfortable getting rid of uh, denominators or undoing fractions. Okay, your algebra foo needs to be strong. But anyway, let's take a look at another one.